the five healthy foods that are easy to love. I'll give you some ideas and tips on how you can love them and why it's not that hard to love them. So, number one is cauliflower. There's so much more that can be done with cauliflower and a lot of people have a tendency to want to write it off because they're like, there is no way this vegetable can taste like a starchy carb like rice or like potatoes. And I'm here to tell you, cauliflower is like a superfood. And in our household, we treat it like a superfood. So what you can do is easily incorporate it by buying some fresh or frozen, throwing it, steaming it, or um, making it on the stove top. There's many options on how you can prepare it, but literally all you gotta do is like steam it and you can put it in a blender or a food processor and pulse it and you got rice. You blend it for a little bit longer, you can have mashed potatoes. Or if you wanna get fancy, I share some other recipes related to how to incorporate cauliflower in your life. And I share that in my diabetes detox where you can make the most amazing pizza crust. And I'll tell you, you can find some pizza crust recipes because I probably made my first cauliflower pizza crust mm, four or five years ago, but none meets, nothing beats this one in particular. Not a thing. So you can transform your health by incorporating cauliflower, and I promise you, you can love it, and it can easily replace your tasty carbs that you feel like you may not be able to live without. Number two, and number two is one of these things that fall into my, my best practice of low carb, high fat. And I think most people like this, but I don't know if people realize how important and valuable it is to your health and your diet, and that is avocados. I put avocados on my breakfast. I eat it for lunch. We put it on whatever we're having for dinner. It is phenomenal. And what's even more cool about it is if you want to look for other recipes and you're like, oh, that's cool. Like I like guacamole. I like it on, you know, my, my cauliflower rice, making a Mexican kind of dish. You can make it into something sweet as well. I have made believe it or not, and they actually tasted good, like no joke. I have made avocado ice cream, I have made avocado brownies, I have made avocado cookies, and they are the foundation of the, of the food. And what's really cool is once you throw in the cocoa powder and the sweeteners, you get this super food thrown into it and you don't even realize it. And so if the green weirds you out or what have you, granted, it might stay a little green depending on if you add cocoa powder or not, but all in all, it's kind of hidden and it is so good. What's really cool about avocado, and you know I gotta hit upon this because we have diabetes and it has, it has carbs. A whole avocado has about 16 grams of carbohydrates, but um, yes, avocado ice cream. It has about 16 grams of carbs and about 12 or 13 grams of that is fiber. So it's full of fiber, it's full of great, great carbs that will not mess up your blood sugar, and it's freaking amazingly filled with fat. And you know, we all about that fat in this life. So you can, yes, try it. Try the ice cream, it's pretty easy, and if you're like me, I like to get really creative with things. Um, I don't really like to stick with like what I find online, but if you Google avocado ice cream, you can try a few, see what you think. Some are not gonna be as hidden. You're gonna definitely taste the avocado. Um, I kinda wing it but you might want some extra guidance. I don't have like a go-to avocado ice cream uh, recipe or I would share it, but don't worry because I will bring up another ice cream option here in the next few foods. So number three is squash. And when I say squash, I'm referring to like all squashes, all squash. I don't know if it's plural with the ES, I think so. Uh, so squash is really cool. And when I think of squash, typically I would think of like yellow squash. And it's like, oh, that's so boring. Like that's all I can eat. That's pretty, pretty bland. But there's so much more than that. So squash, if you've ever like been to the store, especially in fall, there's so many out there. And you have to be willing to try them. There's such amazing options for low-carb low 
carb alternatives to your favorite foods. Yeah, so like butternut squash. Butternut, I don't eat as often because it has a little bit more carbohydrates. Actually, a lot of squash can have a little bit more carbohydrates, but for alternatives to what you typically could eat, you can totally rock these squashes and it'll make you feel good and that's what's most important. So like for butternut squashes, you can make fries out of it. I've actually done that before. I made like loaded fries out of butternut squash. You can make spaghetti squash instead of spaghetti. You can make, oh my favorite, zucchini fries. Literally, that is our favorite recipe and it is so good. So good. You can make zucchini noodles. You can get your veggies, whether it's raw, you steam it a little bit, you cook it a little bit, you bake it. You can use squash for just about anything and you can make it taste how you want. And what's cool too is there's so many out there. And so like acorn squash, for example, it's kind of sweet and it has, it has carbs, but again, it's a better alternative. And it, I love the taste of acorn squash and mixing it with um, kind of like a Mexican dish and adding like turkeys and um, sauce and things like that. So we talked about avocado and being able to sneak in it as ice cream and you get kind of this creamy consistency and it's really good. But, but, this is my favorite, okay? And it's a super, super awesome food and it's gonna lead me into number five. And it's something you may not have tried before and you might not have tried it because you didn't know what to do with it. You saw it at the grocery store, you're like, Ugh, what is that? Why is this here? Whatever. So number four is canned coconut milk. It is one of these things that I honestly never knew what to do with and obviously I incorporate coconut in my life like crazy because it's allowed me to stabilize my blood sugar, feel great, but coconut milk, canned coconut milk, regular coconut milk is awesome too, but canned coconut milk is where it's at. With that, you can make so many sweet goods that will actually support your health in so many amazing ways and you can do ice cream and it's kind of cold you know sometimes if it's winter you're like not really feeling ice cream but you can make the best ice cream out of it and there are actually recipes that you can find that incorporate it a lot more than you realize i just made two recipes this week that are called for it and it starts to kind of like sneak into your into your recipes if you like to cook and what's really cool is like when you're making ice cream, you can use the whole can. So you can use the full fat part that gets kind of hard when it's in the fridge, or you can also use the coconut water in another recipe. And all of that is so great. And again, filled with great high. That's, that's one that I, it's not a vegetable. Most of these are kind of like veggies or along the lines of fruits and veggies. But that one in particular is kind of a challenge for you to maybe try it because it's so different for me. You find it like at the store and like the like Asian section, pretty much. That's where it usually is. Um, and you just try the ice cream first. And you can buy an ice cream maker off Amazon if you go to myhopefulhealth.com. Um, I have like a resource tab that'll tell you um, the one that I use from Amazon. It's awesome and it makes making ice cream amazing and it doesn't mess up your blood sugar. Number five is coconut oil. And I had to bring this one up because today, when this article was shared in this group, people's minds were blown. And if you know me, you know I've been advocating for coconut oil for forever. The article that was shared was about, and this was so cool, because this was shared not in a diabetes group, it wasn't anything like, I don't know, it was in a health related group, but it wasn't diabetes related but it talked about coconut oil, how amazing it is for your overall health, for your body weight if you're trying to lose fat, and it talked about for blood sugar stabilization. What? Like I know fat is really good for blood sugar stabilization, but I never really like told people specifically that like that alone helps with blood sugars. And now that that showed, and it wasn't like a bunch of research or anything, but I thought it was so cool because it backed why I do what I do, why I encourage you to do it for if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to get your cholesterol levels you know, in control, if you're trying to get blood sugars under control, if you're just trying to feel good. Like I have a program 
that you can find on myhopefulhealth.com under the Diabetes Academy, and it's called Healthy, Sexy, Strong. And literally, it's my step-by-step -step process of how, how I've gotten to where I am, how I basically live a normal life with type 1 diabetes. And the first thing that I do is do a coconut oil challenge. I challenge people to consume more coconut oil because so many people don't understand how to do it. They're like, how do you, how do you eat so much oil? Like, what, how is that possible? It sounds so gross, like spooning it out. Like, do you really do that? No, you can incorporate it in so many delicious ways. Just a few are adding it to your vegetables. And side note, if you're going to start incorporating coconut oil, which I challenge you to do, you don't have to get the unrefined kind. That's the kind that tastes really coconutty. And while most people go for the unrefined, I actually buy the refined, but only one brand of it. So I can put it in and on everything. I make sweet goods with um, the, un the unrefined sometimes, but all in all, the refined is where it's at, but only one, and it's by Nativia, and you can find that on, on Amazon, and again, if you go to my resource tab at myhopefulhealth.com -E and under exercise and nutrition resources, it'll take you to um, Amazon, and you can see which kind I'm talking about, because it's rad. And it's amazing. And you can put it on vegetable oils, you can bake with it, you can cook with it, put it in your coffee, it's good stuff. And the moment you start consuming more of this superfood, it is legitimately considered a superfood, like by the books, it's a superfood. You will feel better and you will never wanna go back. I literally consume so much coconut oil each day. I'm so satisfied, I'm like never hungry. My food is delicious and you can start incorporating it today. It's really easy. Those are the five healthy foods that you might have been surprised about that can be easy to enjoy and love. It's, it's that easy.